What is going on guys, it is Wrestlemania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Uncle Howdy to take over Raw with new faction, a WWE superstar believes Roman Reigns is returning at SummerSlam, a new trademark teases a new Bloodline member, good news for Jim Ross, unfortunately sad news for Rikishi, Cody fails to deliver, Joe Biden appearing on Logan Paul's podcast, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. Now, as always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Now, as always, we start off with the good as number one, MJF Rush Brawl. Is Rush the best opponent for MJF following the salt of the earth's extended absence? Apparently AEW feels so. If last night's brawl was any indication, an MJF Rush program could benefit both wrestlers. It would give MJF a reliable worker to help him shed any ring rust and show fans Rush is someone worth MJF's and their time as well. Whether this happens is unknown, but the PS6 brawl was something fans needed to see more of on Dynamite. Number 2. It really is Swerve's house. Swerve Strickland proved that he has what it takes to represent AEW and its world championship by performing in two high-profile segments. Swerve stood toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Elite when they invited him to join him in their upcoming Blood and Guts match and he told him off. This was followed by another exciting spot where Swerve confronted Will Ospreay about their upcoming title match. While AEW shouldn't have Swerve taking up the spotlight this every week, he's proved he's a talented talker, whether it's crushing heels or talking trash to fellow babyfaces. Number 3. Osprey Phoenix Match and Last night's international championship match was a reminder that Ray Phoenix can still have a healthy career even if Pentel Zero leaves AEW. Phoenix, a former international champion, had a fantastic match against Will Ospreay, who looked great as usual and deserves more singles matches. Number 4. Hope for Private Party Could what looks to be a program against Chris Jericho and his learning tree be the jumpstart Private Party needs to get back on track? Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn have shown promise, but injuries and inconsistent booking have made it difficult for fans to connect. If Private Party does feud with Jericho and company, how things play out should give fans an idea whether Jericho is a giving tree or the selfish sap some fans claim he is. Number 5. Joe Hook Dynamite is off the charts a Samoa Joe could be the missing piece of the puzzle that takes Hook from looking like that guy who delivers your Uber Eats into a formidable opponent you underestimate at your peril. Joe still has plenty of credibility as a legit tough guy, so having him mentor Hook seems like a no-brainer. Last night's spot where Hook pulled the nope move out of Samoa Joe's playbook against a hapless flying opponent was pure magic. Number 6. Good build for pay-per-view and Owen Hart Cup a Forbidden Door and the Owen Hart Cup are coming up soon, and AEW made both events seem special by hyping them and showing how everyone in AEW wants to be a part of the pay-per-view and the tournament. Number 7. More hype videos like Mina Shirakawa Last night's hype video for Mina Shirakawa was a work of art as it gave fans an idea of just who she is and why she's a viable contender, and it conveyed a sense of energy you don't often get with the women's division. She's a perfect contrast to Timeless Tony, and their match could be a match Storm needs to show that she's more than just a lady who does promos in black and white. That was the good, what about the bad is number one, a legion of losers. AEW has so many players that it's impossible to keep track of its top stars, so what makes Tony Khan think anyone knows or cares about third string players or outside talent such as CMLL Zeusius? Putting third stringers in squash matches isn't how you get them over, and AEW has to spend more time building up outsiders if it wants them to stand out as more than enhancement talent. Number two, Learning Tree has potential to get ugly quick. Chris Jericho's new learning tree gimmick has the potential to be very good or it could turn ugly very, very quickly. If Jericho phones it in, which is rare with his gimmicks, if not his wrestling, it will quickly be exposed as a one-note joke. However, if he can add variety, it could be very good as it gives him a way to get over and hopefully get Big Bill and Brian Keith over. Now, there was nothing downright ugly. Last night's show was decent, but a letdown from the last few weeks of shows where fans felt like anything could happen. AEW needs to tap back into that vibe if it wants to take advantage of MJF's return and Swerve Strickland's position at the top. What did you guys think of Dynamite last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now, let's move on to the news. Now, first, we look at Uncle Howdy to take over Raw with Faction. And today's top story concerns more rumors about Uncle Howdy and when he'll return to WWE. As reported earlier this week, a recent QR code led to a video showing a countdown that appears to take fans to the 17th June episode of Raw. Now PW Insider is reporting, PWInsider.com has been told by multiple sources that the group was slated to film vignettes this week in advance of their unveiling, which may come as soon as this Monday. The WWE has kept fans on the edge of their seats with various clues and puzzles about Uncle Howdy and what appears to be a collection of creeps joining him. They could be taking over Raw with those creepy vignettes. 
As right now, it's unsure who Uncle Howdy is even targeting. Who do you think will join Uncle Howdy on Monday? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, a WWE superstar believes Roman will return at SummerSlam. As fans speculate when Roman Reigns will return to WWE, Hall of Famer Rikishi is weighing in on Roman's return and possible opponent. Speaking on his Rikishi Fatu off the Top Rope podcast, Rikishi remarked, I almost see Roman Reigns coming in and Solo Sokoa standing his ground because that could be something with the outstanding performance of Solo holding it down since Roman is out of the picture. He's been doing a very good job of building his brand and holding that part of the bloodline. I guess they call it Bloodline 2.0. While Roman is not being advertised for the SmackDown before SummerSlam, savvy fans know anything can happen in the WWE. Next up, a new trademark teases new Bloodline member. Has the WWE come up with a name for former New Japan Pro Wrestling star Hiku Liu? And does it mean he's headed to the Bloodline? A recent report shows that WWE has trademarked the name Tala Tonga, which some fans believe will be his new name, and that he'll be joining his brothers in the Bloodline alongside Solo Sokoa. What do you guys think of that name? He is tall, but does it have to be that obvious? Next up, good news for Jim Ross. Now, Jim Ross has good news about his health following a recent health scare where the man under the black hat was KO'd by a nasty flu virus. Good old JR updated fans via his podcast that I stayed in the hospital here in Oklahoma for three nights, I think it was. I was diagnosed as having, I think they call it a virus A or something along those lines. I struggled a little bit for three days, but I got over the hump like I always do. It seems like I always kick out. I can't do any jobs, you know, not in Oklahoma. Ross added that he has some upcoming wrestling projects, including calling the action for AEW. The next time I'm on the road will be for the AEW pay-per-view, so I'm going to resume my schedule. So I'll be at the next pay-per-view as far as I know. If Tony Khan doesn't want me there, he'll tell me, but that's not been the case. He's been very supportive, which I appreciate. He's been a really good boss and the respect, and I appreciate that. He doesn't have to be as nice to me as he is, but he's very nice and I'm very appreciative. And we're glad to hear JR is on the mend and we wish him a full recovery so he can continue what he does best, entertaining fans with his play-by-play -play commentary. Next up, unfortunately, sad news for Rikishi. Now we're sad to report that Rikishi's cousin Nick has passed away. Rikishi recently informed fans via Instagram that, rest easy my Uso Nick, we grew up in the Bay Area as kids' first cousins. As time flew by, we went on our own separate ways journey of life. Circled back around years later back in Bay Area, we told each other we were so happy to see each other, it's been a minute since we caught up. And we extend our condolences to Rikishi and his cousins, friends and family. Next up, is Ricochet returning to WWE? A could Ricochet rebound from his recent beating at the hands of Braun Breaker? A new report from PW Insider notes that Ricochet's WWE deal is believed to run through until sometime in July. The WWE is mulling over bringing the future of flight back for another angle after the publicity bronze beatdown on Ricochet generated. Next up, Ash by Elegance, ambitious goal. I could Ash by Elegance, aka former superstar Dana Brooke, make a big splash at the 2025 Royal Rumble. That seems to be Ash's goal as she had this to say during an appearance on the Battleground podcast. Up until 2024, I was one of the very few. I think I was one of three or four that had been in every single Royal Rumble. So I took my hit on the heart when I wasn't part of this last one. I think I truly believe coming into 2025, being able to enter the Royal Rumble with a TNA knockout women's title around my waist would be a huge accomplishment in every aspect of my life. Not only in WWE, not only in TNA, but just me personally knowing I never gave up. Do you think she can fulfill her dreams and not only win the knockouts title, but appear at the 2025 Royal Rumble? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Cody fails to deliver. And did Cody Rhodes' appearance on the 11th June NXT actually help the ratings? While there are always many factors involved in a show's ratings, we can report this week's NXT, which was the follow-up to Battleground, brought in 718,000 viewers and a 0.22 share, compared to last week's 768,000 and 0.22 share. So viewership is actually down. Do you think this is a reflection on Cody, something else, or a combination of factors? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Joe Biden appearing on Impulsive. Current US champion Logan Paul has invited US President Joe Biden to appear on his podcast. Paul recently interviewed WWE Hall of Famer Donald Trump and now TMZ Sports is revealing, our sources tell us Logan wants to give his massive audience the full context of the presidential race and his team has already reached out to the White House to see if Joey B would be down to chat. How massive would that be for Logan Paul? And finally, Samantha Irvin responds to snarky fans. Last but not least, WWE ring announcer Samantha Irvin has responded to fans who called her out for a recent picture she shared of herself and fiancé Ricochet. Was there something odd about the picture? No, the people complaining pointed out that Ricochet looks to be in great shape despite the shellacking he took on Raw from Bron Breaker. Irvin reminded people that not every photo on a person's timeline is up to date. The story shows that some call fans will nitpick over anything. But there you have it folks, I will look at Dynamite this week as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.